back for another edition of the MVFC First and Gold podcast. I'm your host, Kelly Burke, and joining me today is a name that Illinois State football fans know well, and that's former NFL player and Redbird standout Colton Underwood. Colton, uh, I've been wanting to have you on for a while, and I'm glad we were able to make it happen, so welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. I'm, uh, I'm really excited and looking forward to it. You know, a lot of people, obviously, in the Valley know who you are from your All-American career at Illinois State, but I feel like there's so much more to your story. And you recently retired from the NFL. And so, you know, I wonder what went into that decision, you know, and then also how hard is it to hang up the pads, you know, for a game that you've essentially probably played your whole life? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I never really let football define me throughout my career. I always um, said that I was so much more than a football player, um, I, but I've taken so much away from the game. You know, the game of football has been I've been playing it for 17 years now, and I've learned a lot of life lessons. It's gotten me through a lot in my personal life like by being able to play this sport. Um, so it's tough to hang them up, but, you know, I, I'm one of those guys. I look back and I'm thankful for the experiences versus, you know, um, regretting anything or, you know, I gave it my all when I was out there. And like I said, I mean, football has just taught me so much. I have formed some great relationships, some great networking. So I'm, to be honest with you, I'm excited for the future. Um, I'm excited that I retired and I'm ready to bring like my effort and my energy into, you know, everything or an everyday life and everyday job. Yeah. How did you, how, how did you know that it was time? Well, I think it was no surprise that, you know, my NFL career, I was sort of spinning, you know, spinning my tires and um, I wasn't getting very far in it. And I was, you know, battling injuries every other season and your your body doesn't heal like it used to when you're 19 and 20 and how I was playing in college. Uh, so, you know, that factored a lot into my decision. Um, I had a shoulder injury with the Raiders last season that um, I'm still fighting and battling. Um, I had surgery on it to get it fixed and it's still sort of lingering. And they, you know, it was sort of the conversation I had with the doctor. He said, you know, hey, if you get hit in the right spot, it could be permanent damage for the rest oh, wow. of your life. So that factored heavily into it. I mean, I'm 25 years old, and I, I want to be able to lift my kids over my head when I get older and enjoy and be a good father. So um, I'm not going to be selfish and, you know, keep trying to, to live out that dream. Yeah, well, good for you. You know, how would you describe... The last three years, though, you know, stints with with the Chargers, obviously briefly with the Eagles and then with the Raiders. And and what I find fascinating is, you know, not only were you a practice squad player, but the Raiders actually had you transition from defense to offense as a tight end. And so what was that transition like? Yeah, I mean, obviously my career was not um, an ideal one for a lot of players. You know, I was going back from West Coast to East Coast at one time. I played for the Eagles for two weeks. Um, but that's part of the business, and that was the that was the quickest thing I learned when I was in that NFL. Is hey, this isn't college anymore. You know, uh, you're essentially this is going to sound bad, but you're not playing for the guy next to you. You're playing for your name on the back of your jersey and to make your impact in the league. And that's that was hard for me to do because I came from Illinois State, where uh, I I gained 25 pounds in an offseason just to go play D tackle because that's where they needed me to go play. So I was willing to do whatever it took to play. And, you know, when it came to the position switch in Oakland, of course, a guy like me, of course, I'm going to say yes. Like, I, I was excited. It was a new challenge. It was something different in my career. So it, that actually, you know, it, it got me excited. I was having fun. You know, I, it was a new position. And like I said, I mean, I, I was sort of stuck in my career of spinning, spinning my tires. And, you know, unfortunately, the lack of experience at the position is what led to my injury. But I like I said, I have no regrets with it. I had a lot of fun and um, I took a lot out of it. You were from Washington, Illinois, a town of about 15,000 people uh, outside Peoria. And, you know, this is something I actually asked Carter Schultz recently, uh, who's, who just uh, left you and I and is, is chasing the NFL dream. Um, how does a two-star recruit become a two-time All-American and eventually an NFL player? Um. I never really looked into the high school rankings too much, and uh, a lot of people, I don't know if uh, anybody really knows my story coming out. Obviously, I was a small time, um, went to a small time high school, was a little bit under recruited if you ask me, but that's that comes with it. That comes with growing up in a small town. Um, I actually had an offer from Wisconsin come on signing day morning after I was committed to Illinois State for about a year, and I turned it down just because of the fact that the, the type of person, I don't 
I don't want to go play for somebody who I'm a second or third option for. And then also, you know, there's the decision of, hey, you know, at, at a Wisconsin, you're going to sit for two years. I was like, I, I want to play football. I want to get in there and I want to play. And I ended up starting a few games as a freshman at Illinois State. And um, I got my butt kicked, but that was the best thing <laughs> for me. Uh, that actually, you know, me playing as a true freshman at Illinois State, I think allowed for a lot of my success on the field there. It, it, it taught me more what not to do than what to do. And I needed that at the time. Um, but I think the biggest key um, is just to outwork everybody. I mean, I was never the most athletic. Um, I had to, you know, I had to work very hard and, and get up early and make sure I had a good diet, make sure I stayed on my training regimen. And, um, you know, I, I sort of got the nickname of grandpa on the team. <laughs> I was going to bed at 10, 10 o'clock at night. I mean, I was asleep by 10 o'clock at night some nights and um, I didn't do a lot of partying or anything, but that's that I knew who I was. I knew the type of player who I was, and I knew that I had to take care of my business off the field to be successful on the field. Yeah. You established Colton's Legacy, your foundation, uh, which raises awareness and, and money for cystic fibrosis and also encourages youth participation in athletics. And why are the, those two causes in particular so meaningful to you? Uh, well, like I touched on earlier, I mean, the sport of football has given me so much, and uh, I, I don't limit my foundation just to football. Um, if it's soccer, if it's baseball, if it's something that gets you into a team and, and has you some, te- or, you know, gives you the opportunity to work with your teammates and work with other people, the skills there are invaluable. Uh, the communication, the, the winning and the losing together, that's, I, I've seen it firsthand what it's done for me personally and the growth that I've had. So. That's, that's what's so important for me to encourage the youth to, to participate in sports, to do something. And I, I mean, it could be all the way from golf to, to chess. I mean, if you have teammates, if you have a team that you have to, to work with and communicate with, you're going to get the, the life experience. Um, and then cystic fibrosis is important to me because my little cousin was diagnosed with it at birth. I think my junior year in college is um, when she was born. And I always said, you know, if I have a platform, I'm going to use it. I don't want to be, um, I don't want to be like, yeah, like everybody else who, who might um, not do some of that kind of stuff in the league. And I was actually just on a podcast yesterday and they asked me about that. And I made a joke saying I might be like one of the least, I've never played an active game in the NFL, but I feel like I've done the most for not playing an active <laughs> game in the NFL. You know, I've definitely tried to use the platform to my advantage. And um, I've had a lot of friends and family um, who have come, come to me and uh, wanting advice on how to get involved in I'd say the, the first thing is just go for it. Um, just do it. I mean, it took me about a year to formally file for my own foundation, but it's so worth it in the end, and the impact that um, everybody's been helping me make is, is awesome. And I think I read that you even built your own website. You were doing your own marketing, the T-shirts, the, the first year you put everything together. Yeah, yeah. So I've, I've learned to delegate a little bit more, but I'm a firm believer, and if you want something done right, you have to do it yourself. And if it was my vision and my brand, I wanted to start it off right. So I actually, yeah, I actually had no clue what I was doing. I just went to GoDaddy.com and built, literally built a website from scratch. Uh, t- that took me about three or four weeks to even get it started. Um, and then T-shirt wise, yeah, I designed my own T-shirt. Um, I sent it to the to the people, and uh, then to be honest with you, then I had it all shipped to my grandma's house. She's she's a warrior because every every camp and every summer, I just I litter her house with goodie bags for the kids, t-shirts. I mean, her, her house sort of becomes a headquarters for my foundation when, when we're preparing. So like I said, I mean, I, I wouldn't be as far as I, I'm, I am right now without the support of my family and friends in, in the hometown of Washington. Yeah. Well, in speaking of your hometown, you do an annual football camp there and this year you added the cheerleading camp to it. So why is it so important? I mean, it would be easy for you to say, okay, I, I don't live there anymore. You know, I'm I'm going to do these camps, but I'm going to do them wherever I'm living at the time. Um, but you go back to your hometown and you give back to your hometown. And so, why is that? You know, something that that you really want to focus on? Uh, because they've supported me the whole entire you know way through. Um, I think at an early age, I was always the one to say, "Hey, I'm going to play in the NFL." And you know, of course, there was people who said, "Oh, no way." But you know, there were a lot of people in town who supported me, and there was a lot of people in my hometown who were always rooting for me and always had that belief. So for me to not give back to Washington and not give back to the community and the little kids is, would be an injustice. And I think that if I could impact one kid to go and push himself and become a pro and 
um, you know, or just learn a life lesson. You know, I've done my job. So that's what's so important for me to go back to Washington is to impact directly, not only the community of Washington, but Metamora, Morton, the surrounding cities that, that actually come out to the campus. Surprising. You know, I was, I was shocked my first year. I thought, I thought, you know, percentage wise, it'd be like 90, 90% from Washington, 10%. It would ended up being 50-50. You know, there was there was kids all over the place coming in, which was uh, very eye-opening. But that's the uh, that's the power of small towns, and that's the power of Central Illinois. You recently surprised an Illinois high school student with a twenty thousand dollar medical vest uh, that changed his life, frankly. And you know, can you share that story? Yeah. So I've been working with my foundation on doing specific things. I don't. Um, I love raising money and writing a check to a foundation to to help you know research and stuff, um, but I want to do more and I want to be able to look back and say hey I did this or I did that. So for me, uh, I found a kid that was very deserving. His story, his backstory was you know something got screwed up in his insurance and he was denied twice for this new uh, medical vest. And I reached out to a contact through OSF and uh, with through Aflovest and Aflovest said sure hey we'll cover it we'll get you the vest. And I couldn't, you know, I couldn't be more thankful for our partnership on that because he, he we did change that kid's life. And um, I didn't know, I showed up to surprise him at his house and I didn't know he's actually training to be um, a pilot. So he wants to go to aviation school. And in order to get into aviation school, I mean, that's the type of vest that he needs to carry on to the plane. And it's the mobile unit that, you know, you could charge the battery pack and you could he could do his treatments literally sitting on a plane while he's learning. So... Um, for me to even hear that, it was like, wow, this is this is something special, um, and I'm so glad that you know I met Ben and I could change his life. Yeah, and, and isn't it amazing how, you know, you go into this with the intention, obviously, of helping others, but the impact, you know, someone like that young man or the camps that you do, the kids you get to meet, have on your own life. Oh, no doubt. Like I said, I mean, football has taught me some valuable lessons, but even this, I mean, I've made a lot of mistakes in my life, but. Um, I think that's the best way is to go through trials and tribulations and, and you push through it. But these kids, I mean, that's something that I put on my social media is they don't realize what they do for me and what they do for my teammates and my players. And um, they change us and they make us better people. And we learn lessons through them. I mean, just just helping coach them and even talk to them. I mean, kids are like kids are the purest at heart. And it's awesome to see. Well, my conversation with Colton continues shortly, but if you're enjoying this edition of the MVFC First and Gold podcast, check out all the lineup media group offerings featuring your favorite sports as well as non-sports podcasts too. Now back to the show. You own, uh, co-own rather, a restaurant with your dad in your hometown uh, called Fourth and Gold Grill. And what inspired you both to get into the restaurant business? Uh, to be honest with you, we sort of just fell into it. Uh, he owned the building, and there was a previous restaurant establishment in there, and uh, he sort of took over. And I, I came to him. It was, it was during the off season. I came to him and said, "Hey, let's let's do this thing." So we worked together, and we opened it up. We had no clue what we were doing. Uh, the first the first month or two was a little rocky, but um, you know, we were just talking the other day. We're we, you know, we're proud of how we've done. I mean, we we just threw ourselves into it like anything else in life. We just I threw myself into it. Um, studied it, learned, uh, did did some research, and it's great. Um, the restaurant industry is a fast pace. I, I like to make the analogy with football. I mean, it's fast pace, high pressure. When when the place is packed, you need to get the food orders out. So um, I knew nothing about the industry. I've never been a server, never been a bartender, but now it's it's crazy. I could you know crazy how many different things I could do if I step into the restaurant. When you, you travel quite a bit, so when you go to restaurants around the country, I mean, are, are you looking at it with a very particular eye now and just kind of critiquing places that you're eating at? Yeah, especially. Um, I'm out in Los Angeles right now, and I, every time I come out here to San Diego, I try a new restaurant place just because uh, the menu that I created there has a lot of West Coast influences. It's a little bit spicy, the fresh take, the, um, some healthy options, some fried options. So I like to I like to go more to the restaurants, not to critique, but to just get their um, take on things because there's so many creative people out there and there's so many great culinary uh, chefs that could do something. And I have some great guys running the kitchen right now back at my place that I have all the faith that, you know, if I brought them a recipe or brought them a food, they could they could uh, knock it out. You come from a really tight knit family. 
you know, your dad played football at Illinois State, your mom played volleyball, and then, then you have your brother, Connor, who played at Indiana State. Um, and so I'm curious whether that was an issue in your house because the rest of you are Redbirds. Um, and then also what it was like playing against him, you know, at Illinois State, because there was a period where you overlapped a little. Absolutely. I think that was, it was so special and it was so fun to play against him. Um, I would have loved to play with him. I wonder what that would have been like, um, us playing on opposite ends of each other. That would have been very special. Uh, but, you know, it didn't it didn't change much in the family, you know, I, other than the orchestrating, hey, who's going to Indiana State this week? Who's going to Illinois State this week? And um, having the family battle. But um, I think it was very it was very special and very unique. But that's something that, you know, that's Connor. Connor's always been the rebel of the family, the rebellious <laughs> act. And um, it was it was cool, and and he set his own mark, and he left his own legacy at Indiana State, and the best, probably in my opinion, the best defensive player to ever go through Indiana State, yeah. and you know, for us to work with each other week in and week out, and share our scouting reports on teams and tackles, like that, that's what people didn't realize, and I didn't speak about that too much in public when I was playing, but I would share my scouting report with him, and he would share his with me on on tackles, other than when I was playing. Indiana State. I wouldn't give him anything on Illinois State, but um, no, I mean, he had a phenomenal career um, and, you know, he worked his ass off. You know, uh, what is he doing now? Uh, he actually works for my father out in uh, Colorado. He's okay. uh, getting ready to open up his own state farm agency. Good for him. That's awesome. You were very much, you know, in the headlines this past year for a relationship you had with Olympian and gold medal gymnast Ali Raisman. Um, and how did you guys navigate that relationship in the public eye? You know, what did you learn from it too? you know, dating um, a fellow professional athlete? Um, I think for me, at least, that's it's always um, that's one of the most attractive things that I, I could find in a, in a woman is is obviously she has her own independence and. Um, an athlete is even better for me. Uh, so yeah, it was very public and that, that was sort of tough, but I enjoyed, I enjoyed the moment. Um, I enjoyed the six months that we were together. We're no longer together, but you know, that's something I learned. People are, people are meant to come in your life for certain periods of times. We're still, we still have a friendship. We, we left in a healthy place. So everything's all good on that front. Um, but we're no longer together, but yeah, it was, uh, it was very public. Uh, I treated those, you know, it was, it was fun date nights going to award shows and, and stuff like that but yeah she's a phenomenal athlete and a phenomenal woman and I wish her all the best yeah how closely do you still follow the Redbirds um you know and what are your predictions for them this season uh, I follow them a lot and I keep up with coach Nowinski me and him have a very good relationship uh same with coach back uh I keep in contact with him as well but you know I think they're gonna they're gonna have another good year they're gonna have another very solid run in the valley uh the valley's tough top top to bottom every year has it been like that the last nine ten years now um I, I think the one question mark for them is is going to be their o-line and then a deep threat in the receiver position but i think their defense is going to be stout their d-line um not to keep pumping them up or put pressure but i think that's going to be one of the strong the strong parts of the team is is their d-line again and that's a credit to coach Nowinski and the job that he's done there and uh and stepping up as a d coordinator you know, what did you learn from the staff there at Illinois State? A, a lot. I owe a lot to, to Coach Nowinski. I, like I said, I mean, anytime I'm in town, I always, you know, try to get over to his house and have dinner with him. Me and him have a good relationship. But um, I took a, I took a lot away, and not just in the football aspects, but in, in life. And, you know, they, uh, they, they're always there for you. Um, it, it was, I can't even, it's hard for me to put it into words, but they go much further than just being coaches on the field. Um, it's the off off the field type stuff, the locker room, the their doors are always open. Um, anything you need help with, you know, they're there for you. So my relationship with all the coaches there is very special to me. Dare to be uncommon is one of your favorite quotes. And what exactly does it mean to you? Uh, I actually got asked that in the podcast yesterday too. And for me, that's by far my favorite quote because I wouldn't say that I have many regrets in life, but one of my regrets was in high school that, you know, I always thought to be cool or to be the, 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 the guy you had to play football or you had to be, you know, an athlete. Well, for me, it's now looking back, I'm like, man, you could be whatever you want as long as you work your butt off for it and you put your 100% effort into it and focus into it. So it's dare to be uncommon is finding what makes you 
you um, and going for it. Don't nowadays we let social media and the peer pressure dictate sort of our decisions and what we want to do in life and who we are. Uh, so I think it's so valuable now when, when people can make their own mark and um, they could be themselves and do something unique. I mean, everybody has a dream and they need to chase it and pursue it or they never know if they can make it or not. Yeah. So following up on that, you know, when it, when your life's kind of all said and done, what do you want your legacy to be? Uh, for me, I just want to be known as more than a football player and I want to be known as someone who, when the time came to step up and, and to change people's lives like I was there, whether it's through my foundation or, sorry, through through coaching a player or a teammate. Um, you know, that was one thing that was that was sort of unique to me in the league is, you know, when the new rookies come in, I felt like I felt like it was my obligation to help them. And indirectly, you're helping your competition because at the end of the day, like those are roster spots that you have to fight for. So um, I was never, it was a fair game. You know, hey, if he's more athletic than me and he could go make a play, he's going to beat me out for it. But, you know, I'm going to do my part as a leader and as a person. And I'm going to help him grow. And I think that's what, you know, that's what life's all about is, is we're here to make each other better and we're here to work with each other. And um, if you're not doing that, it's a disservice. Yeah. You know, I don't think a lot of people realize that you, you just recently completed your degree for, uh, for Illinois State. Um, so congratulations, first of all, that, that's awesome that you went, went back and finished it. Um, but what's next for you? And I know you're still trying to figure some of that out. Yeah, I am, uh, for sure. I focused heavily when I was going back to school on schoolwork and my foundation. Um, but the last month now I've sort of had off and haven't had, um, a set agenda or a schedule that I had to do. So right now, I mean, I'm out in LA, I'm taking some meetings out here cause I spent my first two years in San Diego and I love Southern California. It's definitely going to always be a, a special place to me. So I'm, I'm taking some meetings out here in the entertainment world, trying to figure out, you know, hey, is the acting, the broadcasting, is that for me? Or um, is the corporate world for me? Is sales for me? Uh, I'm just taking some time to figure out, you know, sort of what I have a passion for and what fits me and what suits me. And then the opportunities that lie ahead, um, I'm excited for. Yeah. Is it strange for you to have kind of a blank slate right now and uh just because you've so much of your life you know when you're an athlete no matter what level you're at everything's kind of mapped out for you and you have a routine you know and you get especially as a college athlete and a professional you get so used to having a very regimented schedule yeah definitely uh that structure is there when you when you're playing sports and right now there's no structure uh i try to do my best to keep structure uh, but even changing my workouts, I mean, I don't have to train like a football player anymore. So I've, I've lost about 15 pounds since I, I left and retired. Um, I've started long distance running a little bit just to change it up. I've done hot yoga uh, with my mom. So okay. trying to become a little more flexible. Uh, but that's sort of a, I, I've jokingly put my bios on social media that I'm temporarily retired right now. I'm 25 <laughs> enjoying, enjoying my retirement for a couple months until I figure out what I'm going to do. Uh, but I think, yeah, the uh, the structure is key. I mean, I try to keep my life as structured as possible, but it's hard when you don't have a set agenda or something to, to get going. Well, if you need any advice on long distance running, that was my specialty. I, I was a, a runner for Arizona State and I did distance. So uh, I can well, sort 30, of... 3.5 miles is my longest so far. And um, it's my legs that give out on me before my, uh, before my uh, cardio and my heart. So... Uh, that's the tough part right now. I'm just trying to build the endurance. Yeah, no, I, I understand that. I mean, and, and as I tell people too, I mean, especially longer distance running, it's an acquired taste. You know, you have to, you have to really love pain. Um, and yeah, it's, it's you either hate running or, or you love it. There's kind of no in between. Gotcha. <laughs> you know, if you had a, a perfect day um, or a free day, I guess I should say, you know, you're in, Co you're in Colorado is kind of where you're based out of now. Um, what, what is your idea of, of a perfect day? What would you do? What are your passions, you know, away from football? So it's changed over the last year. I'd say now that I'm done with football, um, I, I could do other things. I could go snowboarding. Um, I could, not that I'm being stupid or, or dangerous, but I could take a little more risk than I could when I was playing. Um, I had to always be careful and always watch out. Hey, don't get hurt doing this. You know, be careful doing that. Make sure you step down carefully, like all the little things uh, just to prevent injuries. But so now, you know, I've gotten a little bit better at snowboarding. I'm not great yet, but I'm, I'm better. Uh, I spend a lot of time with my dog. Uh, I love Snipe. His name's Sniper. He's a black lab. He, he actually lived with me in college, and um, him and his brother did. So 
I go uh, hiking with him. Uh, the, the scenery out there is phenomenal. Um, but other, other than that, just being active, uh, finding something to, to keep me busy and be uh, being active and outside. Yeah. You know, is there anything that I haven't asked you that you want people to know? Um, you know, again, most of them know you from, from your football and playing days. And I, you know, I think it's important to let people know, you know, all the good things you're doing now, as you said, you know, defining your life, not just as a football player. Yeah, um, I think the biggest thing for me is that I'm, I'm an open book, and if anybody ever needs advice or, you know, like I said, I've made a lot of mistakes in my career, uh, both on the field and off the field. Um, nothing that would jeopardize the career, but, you know, I would I would share with anybody who's watching this or any player in the Valley, valley that if they need advice or if they want to set something up like what I've done with my foundation or if they want to make an impact, uh, to shoot me, I mean, shoot me a contact, hit me up on Twitter, hit me up on Instagram, and um, I'm usually pretty good at getting back to you and helping helping you out. So that's one thing I'd like to share. And I mean, you just use, you know, use your resources in college and network and everything will work out. Yeah. Well, I appreciate you taking the time today. And I, I know you're on the road in a hotel room even doing this. So right. It's awesome that you, you figured it out out there. Yep, absolutely. Thank you for having me. And it's, uh, it's good to meet you virtually. I look forward to, to meeting you in person here one of these days. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, if you like what you heard from Colton Underwood in our MVFC First and Gold podcast, take a moment and subscribe. Lineupmedia.fm also is home to many other podcasts, shows like Two Birds on a Bat, Bleacher Bums, and Fairways and Greens, to name just a few. You can also find us on iTunes and Stitcher. <laughs> <laughs>